In an era where rap music was defined by two of the greatest rappers of all time, Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G., the controversial deaths of these two icons left a gaping hole in the rap industry. DMX was the first rapper to take over the reins of Pac and Big to become hip hop's next superstar. He was a combination of artistic brilliance and a rough rider. DMX was a unique breed amongst a sea of talented rappers during that time. His unique style, attitude, and aggression on records would help him gain a massive audience. He became the first artist ever to have their first four albums enter the charts at number one. In this video, we'll be looking at the life of one of the most iconic rappers of all time, DMX was born Earl Simmons in Baltimore, Maryland on December 18, 1970. His mother, Arnett Simmons, was 19 years old at the time of his birth, while his father, Joe Barker, was 18 years old when they gave birth to Earl. Simmons was raised by his mother in the Jehovah Witness faith. It was an experience that would develop strong spiritual faith throughout his career. Still, growing up was hard for Simmons. He was physically abused by his mother and her numerous boyfriends several times. In 1981, towards the end of Simmons' fifth grade year, he got into some serious trouble which led him to being expelled from school. His mom, having given up on Earl, would drop him off at a juvenile center called the Children's Village. It was at this time he would express his passion for music by way of beatboxing. Upon returning to Yonkers, Simmons didn't really have anywhere to go because his mom abandoned him. At 14, Simmons would struggle to find shelter, a lot of nights, so he spent most of his time in the streets of Yonkers battling people and beatboxing. One day, a local rapper, Reddy Ron, caught wind of Simmons and his skills, later asking Earl to join his team. This was when Simmons chose the iconic stage name, DMX, which was later interpreted as Dark Man X. My rhymes are kicking, cooking like chicken, finger licking good, I'm gonna hook your fear stricken out the DM, destroy MC soon as I see him. This would also be the first time DMX would be introduced to Craig by his mentor, according to DMX. In 1986, DMX was arrested for stealing a dog from a junkyard. Just two years after serving time in a juvenile prison, DMX found himself in prison again after being arrested for carjacking. These were the first of a slew of robbery charges DMX would have throughout his career. DMX signed with Columbia Records in 1992 under the subsidiary label Rough House. He went on to release his first single, Born Loser. Unfortunately, the single did not receive much airplay, which would later on lead him to being released from the label. After being released from Columbia Records, DMX released his second single, Make a Move, in 1994. Produced by Irv Gotti, Make a Move wasn't getting spins either. In fact, Wendy Williams, who was a well-known DJ in New York, was given the record, and it was said she turned a corner and threw it out the window. On October 17, 1995, DMX did a collaboration with Jay-Z, Ja Rule, and Mick Geronimo in the track Time to Build on Mick Geronimo's debut album. Also in 95, Dame Dash would wager against the co-founder of Rough Riders, putting his artist Jay-Z up against DMX inside of a pool hall in Bronx, New York. You know, they gonna say they won, we gonna say we won. It was close. Granted, it was close. We gave it to them, they gave it to us, and they did learn that it was equal respect.
1998 was when DMX really announced himself as someone to be taken seriously in the industry. In February of that year, he released his first major label single, Get At Me Dog. The single went on to be certified gold. Now with Def Jam, in May 1998, DMX released his first major album titled It's Dark and Hell is High. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart in the U.S., selling over 4 million copies. On November 4th, 1998, the cult classic Belly, an American crime drama film starring rappers DMX and Nas, alongside Terrell Hicks, Method Man, and R&B singer t boz would debut. DMX was not holding back. In December that year, he dropped his second album, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood. And like his first album, his second album entered the charts at number one and held that position for three straight weeks. The album was eventually certified four times platinum. 1999 came with further legal troubles for DMX with charges against him ranging from drug and weapons possessions to animal cruelty. Nevertheless, towards the end of the year, DMX dropped his third studio album in two years titled And Then There Was X. Again, this album started out as number one in the country with hit tracks such as Party Up, Up In Here, What You Want, and What's My Name. The album became DMX's best-selling album throughout his career with more than five million units sold. Bound by tradition and locked in a war. These two guys with the machine guns, they start blasting off, well, none of y'all make it home. DMX ventured into Hollywood with the action flick Romeo Must Die starring alongside Jet Li. But later in the year, DMX found himself once again in more legal trouble. He was charged with drugs and weapons possession following an indictment by a grand jury. He was also arrested for driving without a license and for assault when he threw a tray of food at a group of prison officers. With his legal troubles behind him, DMX completed his fourth studio album, The Great Depression, which debuted at number one on the charts and ended up with a triple platinum classification. DMX's fifth album, Grand Champ, made him the first and only music artist in history to have five consecutive albums debut at number one on the charts. Following the release of Grand Champ, DMX signaled his intention to retire, but he couldn't commit to it. Around early 2005, Jay-Z became president of Def Jam, which later became an issue for DMX. He would try and release his album only to be rejected by Def Jam numerous times. Yo, uh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you listen to a whole album, mm -hmm. pick a single, shoot a video, then don't know? Mm -hmm. hmm, okay, I see what's really good. You're trying to eliminate the competition. Mm -hmm. J and X being highly competitive thought it was best for him and the label to part ways. Then DMX joined Columbia Records again in 2006 and released his next studio album, Year of the Dog, again. The album only narrowly missed the top spot on the charts this time around. A spiritual man, DMX announced in 2009 that he would start preaching in Jersey City, New Jersey, while still producing music. If I wasn't special to God, Come on, Earl. how would I know what he's willing to do for me? Great. So you know what he's able to do, but how could you know what he's willing to do until you've been placed in a situation where you can get to do it for you? DMX spent four months in jail in 2010 after violating drug probation. After serving this term, he was rearrested three weeks later and sentenced to 90 days in jail following a driving charge he received in 2002. In December 2010, DMX was moved to a mental health unit in Arizona State Prison to address his alcoholism. He was released on July 18, 2011. 
In 2012, DMX returned to the studio to record his seventh album, Undisputed. This album was released in September 2012 to lots of critical acclaim. In January 2015, DMX's eighth studio album, Redemption of the Beast, was released in controversial circumstances by Seven Arts Music Company. In November of 2017, DMX would plead guilty to evading $1.7 million in U.S. tax payments between 2002 and 2005. On January 25, 2019, DMX was released after serving almost a year in federal prison for tax fraud. While in the midst of a pandemic, on July 22, 2020, DMX and Snoop Dogg would face off in a legendary versus battle against each other. Over one million people would tune in to see the versus battle between two of hip hop's greatest MCs. Father, please walk with us through the bad times as well as the good. May we be heard and understood from the suburbs to the hood. May you judge us by our hearts and not by our mistakes and see that we get our breakthrough, however long it takes. May you fill that void in our souls that will lay our fears to rest. But there's no way we can live for Jesus when we're living in the flesh. Please bring us back home instilling us the word which is our backbone. We're just children that act grown. There is so much that we're entitled to, yet we receive so little. Because in this time of spiritual warfare, we're comfortable in the middle. So I pray that you open our eyes. Give us the anointing to recognize the devil and his lies. If we keep our actions wise, our prayers sincere, our heads to the sky, you will diminish our fears. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Let me put this blunt down. Recently, April 2nd, 2021, DMX was admitted to White Plains Hospital in New York after having a heart attack. On April 9th, 2021, a hip-hop legend, Earl DMX Simmons, passed away. That's it for this video. Let us know what you think about DMX's career in the comment section. As always, be sure to hit that like button if this video was informative to you. Also, if you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you can be up on all the latest content.